So in this video, we're going to go over something called conjugate acids and conjugate bases. So conjugate acids and bases are based off of the Bronsted-Lowry model of acids and bases. So we're first going to spend a little bit of time reviewing um, what a Bronsted-Lowry acid and what a Bronsted-Lowry base is. So according to this theory, an acid is anything that's going to donate an H plus or a proton. So any molecule that has the ability to lose a hydrogen is considered an acid. So the example we're going to use is water. So water has the ability to lose one of its protons and it will become two separate species, two ions, one that's H plus, which is the proton or hydrogen ion, and one that's OH minus, which is the hydroxide ion. A base is the opposite. A base, according to Bronsted-Lowry, is anything that accepts a proton or an H plus ion. So in this case, um, we are going to have water that's gaining a proton or a hydrogen ion, and it forms H3O plus, or the hydronium ion. So anything that can accept an H plus or a proton is considered a base. So let's look at how our acids um, form conjugate bases. So when a compound donates an H plus, or proton, which would mean an acid. So whenever we have an acid, according to Bronsted-Lowry, it forms a compound that can now do the opposite. So it's lost a hydrogen, which means that the end result can accept a hydrogen back, which would be a base. So that thing that we form after it donates the proton is called the conjugate base. So an acid will donate a hydrogen, and then whatever's left is the conjugate base of that acid. So in this example, our acid is our water because it's going to donate the H plus, and then our conjugate base is our OH minus because that's what it forms after. It works the same way with bases and conjugate acids. So when a compound accepts a proton, um, which is a base according to Bronsted-Lowry, it then forms a compound that can now have the ability to donate a proton, which would make it act like an acid. And so that species that's formed is called a conjugate acid. So when a Bronsted-Lowry base accepts a proton, it forms a conjugate acid. So in our water example, um, we have our water in this case, which is acting as a base because it accepts the proton and then it forms our H3O plus, which is a conjugate acid. Okay, so let's look at some more complicated examples. So when we go through and do these practice, um, I find it easiest to always figure out which two are going to be in common first. Okay, so if I look at my very first example and I look at um, HCl, so hydrochloric acid, Okay, and then I'm going to look on the opposite side of the arrow. Now, on the product side, there are two things. There's NH4 plus and there's Cl minus. So if I ignore my other reactant, the only thing that HCl has any ability to turn into would be Cl minus. So that's its partner. Now, if I look at how that forms, HCl is losing a hydrogen or donating a hydrogen to form Cl minus, which is the chloride ion which means if HCl is losing a hydrogen, it's an acid, and its partner, what it's forming, is the conjugate base. So now if I look at my other part of my reaction, I have NH3 as the reactant side, and its partner is gonna be NH4 plus. So if I think about how it turned from NH3 into NH4 plus, it had to gain a hydrogen. So if NH3 gained a hydrogen that made it a base, and then the thing that it formed was the conjugate acid. So as you can see, we have an acid and a base as the reactants, and a conjugate acid and a conjugate base as the products. Okay, so let's look at our second example. So if we have OH minus, and then as one of our reactants, and then we're going to go find its partner, um, 
So it had, we have two options as our products. We have H2O and we have um, the cyanide ion. So OH is gonna have the partner of H2O. Okay, and in order to do that, to go from OH minus to H2O, it's gonna gain a hydrogen, which means OH was a base, and that makes H2O, because that's its partner, the conjugate acid. Now, if I look at my other species, it should be the acid in the conjugate base, but let's check and make sure. So I have HCN, and then CN minus is gonna be its partner. So in order to go from HCN to CN minus, um, it had to donate a hydrogen. So if it donated a hydrogen, that makes it an acid, and that makes what it formed the conjugate base. Now would be a really good time to pause and try the next two on your own just to kind of test yourself. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue and work through this, but like I said, this is a good time to pause the video and test yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my next species. I have the phosphate ion, and this is gonna be its partner. In order to go from our reactant to our product, we had to gain a hydrogen. That makes it a base. That makes this the conjugate acid. And then my other species is HNO3. Its partner is gonna be NO3 minus. In order to do that, it had to donate a hydrogen. So it started as an acid, it turned into the conjugate base. And then in my last example, my HCO3 minus is what I'm starting with. Its partner is H2CO3. And in order to do that, it had to gain a hydrogen. So it, is, it started as a base, it turned into the conjugate acid. And then the other part of my reaction is HCl. Its partner is Cl minus. In order to go from HCl to Cl minus, it started as an acid and it turned into the conjugate base. So as you can see from all of these examples, they can be written in any order. Um, the acid in the base, but it's always going to start with an acid in a base and then form a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. And so that's how we can identify acids and bases and their conjugates according to the Bronsted-Lowry model of acids and bases.